Doug Lowe with Artisan Construction in Charlottesville, Virginia. Today we're going to talk about insulating your attic. Uh, you need to remember that most homes are simply built to code and you should look at code as being only a minimal amount. Regardless upon the age of your house, you may have minimal or you may have a little bit more, but either way, it's almost certain that you could gain in efficiency by adding more insulation. We're going to talk about two different types of insulation. One will be fiberglass bats and the other will be blown cellulose. When you place the attic insulation, you want to make sure that you're using a safety mask for breathing and safety goggles uh, so that you're not inhaling the fiberglass fibers as you place it. Uh, we simply would put it over across the insulation that exists and you could do this in various uh, depths. One thing I would point out, um, in this case we added an R19 bat but you can get up to like an R38 bat, maybe there's something more, but anyway, this is a little more expensive than the other tips we've talked about. However, it's probably the most, um, it would be the most help for the house to increase your energy efficiencies to add insulation in the attic. Here's what you need to know about blown cellulose in insulation. First of all, we're working from outdoors because we're gonna have a machine out here that we can blow the material in, but simply, the material looks like this. In most cases, this is uh, ground up newspaper treated with borate, which most people consider to be very, very safe. It's also fire resistant. What we're going to attempt to do is spray this uh, cellulose in insulation up in the attic. It comes in bales like what you see here. And we purchased this at a local home building supply store. And the great thing about this project, it's a really uh, simple do it yourself type thing. Um, when we purchased 20 bales of this, they loaned us the machine to blow it into the attic for free. These bales cost about $10 each and our goal today, there's a chart on each of these bales, our goal today is to put in about six inches and we'll settle down after a few days and probably look about five and a half inches thick. But we should be able to cover 36 square feet per bag. Since we have 20 bags, we should be able to cover 720 total square feet. So that computes to about $200 to cover the 720 square feet with uh, the material cost. Um, it goes in with very simple tools. First of all, we'll have the blower, which we'll show you during the process. Uh, you'll need a, a tape measure so that you can determine when, when you've got a depth of six inches approximately. Uh, you'll need a respirator mask and some safety goggles. So here's the machine that we got to use for free when we purchased the insulation. Before we got started, we laid a, a tarp of plastic out because some of the material will spill over and you want to have an easy way to clean up. We simply put the material in the machine. You can see this and there's some safety features to the machine. You want to read those carefully. Keep sticks and children away from the machine. But once you've started emptying the bag in here, you probably use about a half bag at a time in this particular machine. On most machines, you would hook up your hose here carefully. And when you're ready to turn the blower on, you have to usually pull this plate out, at least on this machine, about three-fourths of the way. It opens up the hole allow the insulation to go down through the hose. One thing I want to point out about the blown cellulose is that it is at least a two-person job. You get one person holding the sprayer and spraying it around the attic in the appropriate depths and you have another person feeding the bells of cellulose fiber into the machine outside. One of the elements of doing a good blown cellulose uh, project is that you uh, may need to add a board around the opening to the attic hole, the scuttle hole. As you can see, we have no insulation here, but if we had a board here, we could blow in behind this and get the six inches. But we had the six inches in the other areas. But the idea is to try to have it as consistent as you can. And when you use the blown cellulose, you may need to take a, a rake and just kind of even out some of it. You might get some lumps in areas that are thicker than, than others, but in general you want to get the six inches or whatever desired depth that you want to have. There's a uh, panel that we like to put at the vent edge, at the eaves edges, that allows the airflow to continue coming in, so you don't want to accidentally cover up the soffit at the end of your roof. But as you can see, this panel fits between the trusses and is put in, allowing the airflow to come up through here and we've got one in place right here. That air comes up through there and exits out these eaves right here. 
So if you have a vented attic, you want to make sure the ventilation is not blocked. The bottom line is that cellulose insulation is a great solution to adding more insulation to your attic. For one thing, it's not toxic. Another thing, it fills all the voids and cracks everywhere, probably better than fiberglass insulation can. You should get probably 15 to 30 percent energy savings depending upon how much insulation you started with. And all in all, it should be a big money saver for your um, utility budget.